Well, we got a lot to cover here today. You can see there's a, a position um, today that I've been waiting for all morning, all morning. And uh, I think I'm finally being rewarded for my patients right there. And if you're coming to see me this April, you'll understand why that candle was as important as it was. But oh, State of the Union, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's all the same stuff. And uh, honestly, I'm just tired of it all. I'm tired of watching the same thing. There was a moment in my life where I realized, here, I'm going to find it for you. It occurred to me, I had a, a King Solomon moment of sorts. By the way, if you're here today and you're very, very confused as to what's happening right now, it's okay. <laughs> I promise it's going to be all right. I was driving home. Uh, with my kids and my wife in the car, as I am prone to do. And I've listened to some music in my life, not an audio file like some of you, but I've heard a few songs. And my daughter was telling me about this great album from this artist, Taylor Swift. And I had heard Taylor Swift uh, when she was younger. I promise there's a trading uh, metaphor here. And back when she was a country western uh, beginner, there was a great song. It was on the charts uh, called Our Love. Our Love is a slam and screen door. It was cute. It was kind of nostalgic, really fun to listen to. And then I just couldn't understand. It seemed like out of nowhere. It was all I heard, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. And then one day I heard a song and I said, I know that song. I grew up with that song. This isn't, where have I heard this song? And my wife thought I was having a stroke. <laughs> she said, enough, leave it alone. And then I found it. And someone else had the same thought that it repeated this song. And if you remember this song, it's a band called Third Eye Blind. And there's this really catchy hook in the chorus. Do, 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 do. I remember the video on TV. I remember all of it. And I'm sitting here listening to the radio saying she's singing their song. And someone took her song and put it completely on top and took away her music and she's singing their song. It's almost an exact copy. And I realized every decade or so, they replace the person who filled the spot with a new person. James Brown passes away. Bruno Mars slides in. Whitney Houston passes away. Mariah Carey's gone. Ariana Grande, push her right into the slot. And the music was the same. Unless you listen to Billy Joel, and don't get me started, because what an amazing man. <laughs> and so the markets are like that, where they want us to forget the fact that they've done this before. We sat through the 0809 recession and the crash. We sat through the 2020 recession and the crash. We remember commercial real estate is falling apart. The money supply is shrinking. Defaults on um, car loans and student payments, student loan payments, the highest personal debt levels since 2008. Everything looks like the Great Depression metrics, these lines on economists' graphs that haven't crossed in over 100 years are crossing again. And they're going, but look at this robot. It can make a cup of coffee. This is what's driving 
driving the economy. <laughs> Mike, I'm not that stupid. Is anyone else that stupid? I guess so. Anyway, I'm Michael Leidick. I'm the co-founder of backtothefuturetrading.com. And we have a fairly um, a fairly unique proposition for people uh, in the markets that are looking to sort of take advantage of the um, the patterns that appear in the data and be ready, be aware when these moves are coming and when the people who control such things are getting ready to place these trades where, oh, where did that come from? There was no way to know. Um, hey, Thomas, if we want to go down that road, you got to throw your guy in the same column. No one here gets to say their guy isn't part of the problem or one of the actors in the play. Not in this webinar. <laughs> yeah, your guy too. Your guy too. <laughs> Everyone's an actor in this big play. And it's big amoebas and small amoebas and little paramecium's and they're all fighting for the same piece of the pie. And everyone's got their finger in it. And Darwin is laughing his rear end off. Every single one. Every time I think, that's my guy. He's different. He gets in and does the same stuff as all the other guys. <laughs> Nobody's got a guy. That's my theory. And I'm not going to apologize today for that. If you didn't like me saying that, I'm really sorry. But your guy's part of the problem too or a well-paid actor let's put it that way anyway i continue earlier in the week we believe that this is such a real thing that we invite people who are taking our uh trial on the web page to kind of join along with us and look and see what might be likely to happen at times in the future. And one of the easiest ways to sort of envision how this program works, we're talking about tachyon warp right now, is to sort of envision uh, a behavior pattern that repeats. So imagine on the E-mini S&P that the market goes up three days in a row, exactly at 9.30. And exactly at 9.30, three days in a row, the market shoots straight up 20 points, like 9.29, 58 seconds, 59 seconds, boom, straight up. Would it be reasonable to think, hey, I'm going to watch where the market is at <coughs> 9.29, put a small stop under here, and see... If they don't do the same thing again tomorrow. And now you've sort of got the premise of how our software works. It's a belief that there are patterns in time that are repeating lately with irregular regularity. I love that phrase. I love that phrase. And so, when we come and look at the E-mini S&P today, this information has been available since Tuesday of this week. Now, there's a lot of reports between when this was published, when you got your hot little hands on it, and today. There were non-farm payrolls, and Jerome Potato Head Powell said some stuff, and there was some inflation reports, big stuff that we couldn't have known was coming. What will the results of those reports be? And yet, right here, we're left with this thing. And so when we compare this thing to what's on my chart right now, can everyone see where the signal at 350 Eastern is? 
Again, I waited all day for this. I'm so happy. I wanted you to see it. <laughs> I made it for you. So Thomas, 1550 is 350 Eastern time. I am in the beautiful state of North Carolina, south of the Mason-Dixon line. And then can everyone see on my actual chart two days later, 350? And then down over here, it says 350. And then it says 420, military time. <laughs> military. And in three minutes and 12 seconds, that 420 candle is going to close. And Thomas, the program was warning me from Tuesday. A voice calls in the wilderness. Watch out for 350 on Thursday, day, day. That's all I'm saying, saying, saying. Someone's going to try something again, again, again. And here we are. And we're left with an uncomfortable conclusion. An extremely uncomfortable conclusion. Order submitted. Order filled. Order canceled. Someone had a plan today. Someone had a plan today. No matter what the things were. Now, excuse me, I got to take a quick screenshot because someone else. Whoops. Someone else I was telling was coming with this close below that line. Cancel recording. Just forgive my nonsensical shenanigans here for one second. I want to send it to him and rub his little face in it. <laughs> what happened today? Well, Let's break down a few things and talk about how this tool works and how you might be able to use it. First, I'm gonna disable those open price lines. If you were part of my live room this morning, you know where those horizontal lines came from. And now we're sort of back on level ground. So this morning, before we came out of the gate, this is where the magician sort of tells you how hard the trick is gonna be, right? If we look at what the reports were, I want you to see the odds that were stacked against us. <laughs> and so at 8.30, we had unemployment, non-farm payroll, trade balance. And then look, this knucklehead, whenever this knucklehead talks, the markets usually go down. And no one trades when Powell's talking. We had a bunch of stuff, consumer credit, three o'clock. And so this, this, uh, this fantasy that the times we've had since Tuesday would have any effect on what the markets did today is sort of insane. And I'm the first to admit it. Now, what we do with the times is as important as what the times are. And so it's important that we want to separate ourselves first from the herd. If you're here today and you've been part of someone else's marketing machine, you got emails. If you're a customer out there who's got five different email addresses because you get emails from stuff you bought from trading vendors 19 years ago, I get it. <laughs> I understand. If you've been part of a group with a guru and you've sat there, on bated breath, no clue why, but you were going to buy and sell when they did. I get it. If you've had lagging indicators where the signal disappears and reappears and you're like, wait a minute, that wasn't there a minute ago. And what happened to the failed signal? It's missing now. Quiet, you. I get it. Why are we different? Because of what we believe. We believe time is a very important part of why markets move and why people, frankly, behave the way they do. We're the only company that believes it so much that will give you the times in advance 
and then come together two days later to see, hey, what the heck actually happened at the Times? Fun fact. If you come back two days later, cool stuff happens. After 15 years of doing this, I can tell you, I'm not really scared of you. <laughs> and so we're going to kind of see by the end of today if this was a useful tool. So I want to skip right down to the difference between the signals and the setup. Many of you are coming here today from different backgrounds, right? You trade different ways. And some of you have used volume, you used order flow, you used uh, volume spread analysis using deltas, you're using uh, candle patterns, support and resistance, combination of trend lines, trend line breaks, fill in the blank. These times are useful to anyone using anything here today because they represent. This is really important. I took my hat off, so you're going to have to look at my bald head for a minute. They represent moments that, for whatever reason, are repeating like ripples in a pond. Do you ever throw a rock in a pond and there's like a ripple and a series of waves? I love to go to the beach in the winter, in the early spring when no one's there. And if you look at the ripples in the sand from the effect of the wind swirling, there's this beautiful fractal pattern of wave after wave after wave. And they seem to continue endlessly across the sand from the water to the dunes. Mesmerizing, very meditative for me. I have a lot of junk going on up here that I have to sift through. Well, if you think of, I'm not sure which way the chart is relative to me, I think it's here. If you think of these times as echoes of movements that keep occurring lately in this market, it's not outside of the realm of possibility that the move may happen again. So if you're watching volume, these may be moments where climax candles occur or divergence arrives. If you're watching candle patterns, these may be times where dojis arrive. If you're watching trend lines, these may be areas where the bull flags appear and the breaks occur. And so what I try to do at the webinar is show a very basic setup, something that we can track across now 15 years of doing this to see, is there any kind of Mark Douglas trading in the zone statistical edge that we can extra extricate from the raw signals? Because otherwise they're just white and blue lines, right? They're just times. What do I do when I get there? And so the principle setup that we've taught 15 years, this is a new drinking game. Every time Michael says 15, you have to drink. <laughs> Most of you that I've met who are net profitable, when I ask you, what are you doing? Two thirds or more of you will say in some uh, format or another that you're trading with the trend. You identify trend maybe differently, but most of the people who are making money are identifying what direction the market's moving and trading in that direction, up or down. So we call that a, an SWT, a signal with trend, and we identify every week with a 120 period EMA, Echo Michael Alpha. <clears throat> and I use a 1.5 average true range stop. The ATR is an indicator developed by Wells Wilder, formerly of Greensboro, North Carolina. I think he made his way to New Zealand at one point. Pretty cool dude. I wished I'd have met him among, among other people. I thought that would be a cool lunch. 
And Wells said, hey, I'm going to measure on average how big a bar is lately. How big is a three-minute bar on average? And our stop is the distance of an average bar plus 50% more. So we put our stop just outside of one bar away from how big the market is right now. We're going to enter on the close of the candle and exit by the next opposite signal. Does that make sense? We're going to enter on the close of the buy candle, a time where the market historically, lately, like a ripple in a pond, repeating over and over again, may push our order up. Our stop is just outside the noise. <coughs> Forgive me. And now there's an expiration date to the carton of milk. You see, when these blue times arrive, they're enigmatic of a move that has occurred historically in the opposite direction. Do you get that? So if the market's moving up, this 642 signal represents a time where someone has pushed up. 703 represents a time where someone has sold. Sellers are not good for buying. They mess it all up. A little yeast in the bread, right? Spoils the leaven. Sellers, no bueno. So we see their their pockets now or windows that we can try to exploit with trend that address several issues that almost every one of you are dealing with. Most of you let your stops go too long. You let your winners die as soon as they turn green and you over trade. I'm guilty of it. So what this seems to do is say, hey, you got three or four chances to try something. Your stop is predetermined because if it doesn't move now when it's supposed to, why are you letting it run? I use the example of a UPS driver. I get my packages between 1030 and 1045 lately. I'm not standing there at 1046 waiting for the package. If he ain't there, he ain't there. And he won't be there till 1030 tomorrow morning. That's my time stop. And then three, I know how long the trade has to go, potentially. The program is telling me, hey, dummy, you got 18 plus three minutes, 21 minutes before historically anyone tries to take profit. So now mentally, I want you to really let this soak in. Mentally, your brain has something to cling to. Have you ever seen those rock climbers? They climb without a rope. The guy's name is Alex something. World famous. They did a documentary video about him. He goes out there and he free climbs. And all he needs is a little tiny ledge. And he gets his fingers and he holds on to it. He just needs a little bit of a ledge. And his brain goes, okay, I know I can pull up off of that ledge. I'm not scared. He needs a little crack. And he shoves his pinky and his middle finger in there. And he's like, yeah. When you don't have these times, there's a very powerful evolutionary subtext that rises to the surface. And it sounds like this. All right, you're up uh, six ticks. Why don't you close this thing out, bud? Hey, crazy pants, uh, seven ticks. I don't know what you're doing. If your wife finds out you were up seven ticks and you didn't cash it out, she's going to scream at you today. If she comes home and sees your minder is red, if he comes home and sees your minder is red again, ooh, eight ticks, you're killing me, man. It's going to go down. It's going to go down and hit your stop. I swear to God. And, and then you close it out. And what does it do? 18 ticks, 26 ticks, 35 ticks. And now you want to jump off a bridge. This is that little ledge that goes, hey, you got 21 minutes, dude. It's all right. I got you. I'm your rope. You're going to be okay.
there's a reason. There's a voice in the darkness of your mind going, shh, he's okay. He's got this. So now, Stanley, let's take a look. Let's see what we can do with that today. Ready? 7.55, right before the report. The close of the candle, 51.23 quarter. The stop, Stanley, is underneath this white line. These lines populate when the candle arrives. And the stop is at 51.19 quarter, about four points. How long does the trade have to work, Stanley, before I have to get off the bus? I don't want to I don't want to stay on the bus too long and end up in Queens. <laughs> I'm supposed to get out of Brooklyn. So Stanley, look at the simplest possible thing we can do with the times in an organized setup. I get in at 7:55 and look. 9:15. Yeah. And I'm out. Now, what do I do between 9.15 and 9.55? That's 40 minutes. Nothing. <laughs> In the basic, the most basic configuration of this, you do nothing. <laughs> Make a sandwich. Matt writes, Michael, do you trail the stop or do you leave it static or move to break even? Matt, there are a million variations and no two of you are going to do it the same way. You never trail it the same way. The purpose of this, exer this exercise is to say, what is the most basic possible execution? So think about that experiment. On Tuesday, we have the times with a trade plan. No clue what's going to happen when we get there. When we get there, if the trend is up, we trade buy times. If the trend is down, we trade sell times with a stop. That's about as much detail as people can handle in this much experiment. You want to trail the stop, you know, four ticks under the low of each of these candles. Knock yourself out. I'm just saying, what happens if you trust that window completely? You understand? Does that make sense? What happens if we think the bank vault is going to open when JP Morgan reaches in, our little fingers are in there too, picking away quarters off the table. And when JP Morgan's hand usually goes away, we go, all right, you know what? That's enough quarters. Do you understand the concept of this exercise? Because it shouldn't work at all. The signal at 9.55 ends at 10.40. Here's a weird one, 10.50, oh, it ends negative $5. And then you had that move from hell today. When did it go up? Here to here. My Swedish chef impersonation. Here to here to here. Here to here. And then we had a stop out. Right there. If you went long at 420, look, you're even up right now. <laughs> and today I was short from here to here with all of you watching. But we'll leave that one out because that's counter trend. So 12 plus 11, 23, 31, 32, 35, 26, 21. That's a thousand dollars per contract. Interesting. Stanley, how is that possible? Because it wasn't just today. We can go back. Do you see the times from yesterday? <laughs> if we go back and look at the times that we had on the chart yesterday, 
it kind of looks a lot sim a lot a lot like today, doesn't it? <laughs> you kind of have a lot of those movements. And then if you look and you go past and you look at the day before, Stanley, what if we took shorts? At 7.45 and got out at 8.30. What if we took a short at 9.30 and we got out at 10.20? What if we took a short here and got out here? Right? We can follow these times on the way down. But there seems to be a plan that people are following at these times more often than not. Any questions about this? <laughs> I want to show you something else that'll kind of hurt your brain a little bit. This is the daily chart that we review every Thursday. And on the daily chart, Matt, we can see the future. We can see on a daily chart when the signals are coming. And if you're not sure if you can trust me, you can go back to last week's YouTube where we had the recording of the webinar. And in the webinar, Matt, can you see that chart? Stanley, can you see that chart? We knew that the market was going to go up from the 21st to March 7th. And if you went to the webinar recording before that, there was just a white line on the 21st. And there was just a blue line on the 9th. And I've documented week after week after week when there were no price bars here, what we were expecting at these dates. And a funny thing starts to happen. down on December 22nd, up on December 11th, up from January 11th until January 19th, up from January 29th until February 9th, down until February 19th, and now up until when? March 7th. What's peculiar about this? Well, I want you to think about this. Michael, I get stopped out all the time. Hmm. It sounds like getting stopped out is a way that banks use to generate liquidity and create directional movement. Doesn't it? What if, what if we run the stop of the all time high on a day that you and I have been waiting months for? <coughs> what if? On a bullish day, <clears throat> when we end on an all-time high, the very next day we come up and come back down and trap all those traders and take profit here. What are the odds, Stanley, that they're setting us up right now to do the same thing and come up tip out the stop, and then come down again. Huh. This seems like we have a copy of the other team's playbook. This seems like we have a copy of the other team's playbook. And we know what they're setting up. There's a big window between March 7th and March 22nd, that's a 15-day window. This was a 15-day window up. Thomas, let me ask you a question. Now that I show you this, is this possible? Is it possible we're seeing this right here? Huh. You can almost see the dates and the times and the directions, can't you? But before, 
it was just times on the chart, just like you have now. Any questions about this? Any questions about what we're looking at right now? Because it's fascinating to me. We already know the dates in the future. We already know the times in the future. And right now, there's a really low risk short just above that high. If you put a micro on overnight, or if you look for puts, no one's thinking about puts right now. Not after today. They're telling their wife, hey, Betty, yeah, I'm moving all the money out of our retirement account. And I just bought 1,000 calls on SPY. And we are going to be millionaires. Nope. Day closed on a high. AI is making everything efficient. Elon Musk, his robot was dancing. I bought a thousand calls. We're going to be millionaires. You know that kid across the street who bought all the Bitcoin? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to pull up on, on him with our C7 Corvette next week. And meanwhile, JP Morgan's laughing their asses off. <laughs> That guy, that guy just bought a thousand calls. <laughs> At the very least, Matt, it's a time to be careful. It's a time where you go, what are you? What happened right now? It's a time where we can maybe use all those other things, right? All those other things you've ever watched before. And you start to go, hey, wait a minute. How come when the price is rising, that MACD is falling? <laughs> Why is that happening? Huh. I learned about that in Trading 101. I still have the book. And all of a sudden now, that starts to look more and more suspicious. And now you come down and you start to go, hey, maybe, maybe on a 60-minute time frame, I'm going to see some stuff. What's going on on a 60 minute time frame? And you're looking here and you go, whoa, two o'clock on a one hour time frame was a sell signal. Okay. Those of you that do multi time frame analysis, higher time frame analysis, what did it look like on a 15 minute chart today? <clears throat> and you can see them leaving the party. Here's an advanced nugget. Can everyone see right here at 2.30? Matt, when it was time for them to buy again, did they? No. <coughs> no. They stepped away. At 2.30, they said, excuse me, we're going to go. Where are you going? You're supposed to go up. No, nah, we're we're done. And then the sellers took over and said, thank you. <laughs> you can see when they're abandoning a trend after going up and up and up all morning. So the timing analysis gives us some insight as to when these moves are likely to occur. Any questions about that? Does this work on other markets? Like what? What other markets do you want to look at? What other ones are you curious about that we can apply timing signals to and see what are they up to? Anybody? I'll tell you one you should be watching. <clears throat> If you haven't been paying attention, gold is going up and up and up and up. And you can start on a one minute chart and you can just look for all the times where gold is supposed to go higher and higher. I have to load a different template because this one's too sensitive. This is my default signals. There's gold on a one minute chart. Anytime there is a buy signal in gold, give it a shot. 
Give it a shot. Try it out. These were the signals for gold. I think I published the ones for the five minute chart. Okay, now this is where your noodle will bake. Because if we go back to the webinar forecast, these were the times we had for gold since Tuesday. 6.55, 8 o'clock, 9.15, 3 o'clock. You see it, Stanley? 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5.30, 5.30, 6.55, 6.55, 8 o'clock, 9.15, 8 o'clock, 9.15. Are we all in agreement that the times that were published on Tuesday are the times being marked by the software today? Yeah. Now here's where it gets weird. <laughs> Stanley, that's weird, man. Isn't that a little weird? Matt, what's going on on this chart? I want you to think about it. I'm trying to get in here. I want you to let me in. These were the times, blue and white lines, for gold futures published to a web server, a web domain, with, a, with an indelible publishing mark. We can look at the time where that file was stored irrevocably, immutably. This was when the screenshot was created. Hasn't changed since Tuesday. And when we got here today, what happened at 8 o'clock? What happened at 9.15 and 10.10? What happened at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1.25 and 3.10? 3, what happened at 12.55? Some of you are breaking down right now. Your noodle is baking. You're like, I don't understand. Who's doing this? Why are they doing it? Who cares? There was a crypto trader who had a mouse run in and out of a house that he built out of cardboard. And when the mouse ran in one side, it bought the cryptocurrency. And when the mouse ran in the other side, it sold the cryptocurrency and he was beating the market. That's a cool mouse. Who cares why it works? You feed that mouse filet mignon and cheese from Paris <laughs> flown in. Do mice eat meat? I guess they do. I saw the rat eat the pepperoni pizza in New York. <clears throat> and then Stanley, this one didn't work very well, right? 1020 didn't work. It kind of fell straight down, but the 11 o'clock one did. And then the 12 o'clock one did. <coughs> <coughs> Right. So there's really nothing I can hide. There is no guru. Um, there's no guru magic here that I can deploy. So, Matt, you asked about the NQ today. Let's just, again, go through the exercise one more time. Transparency is important to me. I want you to believe there was nothing I could do to uh, jury rig this, finagle it, to make you appear, to make it appear better than it was. Was everybody good on the gold stuff before I move on? I can show you something really cool on gold if you want when we're done on this. I'll come back to it if it's something everybody's interested in. This was the chart for the NQ one minute. Let's just look, 951.10.09. 951.10.09. 9 okay. So Matt, just a quick summation, in, out, in, out, 
in out in out in out in stop out in out in out and so on and so on and stop out in out in out and that's 1221 18 4 10 2 20 1 20 22 17 19 minus 14 minus 29 using the system that I told you about last week, the week before, the week before, haven't changed one thing. So in its most basic configuration, Matt, see the, the bar, the bar is so high for me. I, I appreciate you telling me you're a believer. It helps me um, temper the, the energy that I come at someone with. So, Goose Fraba, Goose Fraba. I'm generally in its most basic form, believing and assuming that the ripple will produce another time. I'm, I'm falling back into the faith of that. I believe that is the operating system, right? The minute I try to veer off that reservation, into lagging lagging land that's when i get all screwed up when i start watching candles oh it's a bullish engulfing oh i'm drawn back into that other universe and so if i'm using this as a template there's a window that's opening i want to stick my contract in here with a little bit of risk and see if it sweeps me into that move. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because otherwise, that's impossible. And even look at the, the weird moves. At the, did you see the weird move at the end of the day, Matt? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's kind of a little crazy. And it was on that histogram I gave everybody. About 18,000 people got that. And so what it tells me, even as sloppy as it is, is Matt, there was a plan at an institutional level to do this, to do this, to do that. How many people lost their lives today financially in that? How many people's PAs were blown out at Apex Investing today? How many people lost their Bullinox, Bullinox accounts today when that happened? Yeah, man. So let's take a look at gold because gold's got a weird thing going on. Have you met Wiles? I call him Wiles. Would I have liked him? In my head, I imagine I would have. In my head, I imagine we'd have had barbecue, lemonade, maybe sweet tea. And we would have had a really cool conversation. I would have shown him some stuff with his Market Delta Society that he was off on. Matt, you want to see something cool with the Market Delta Society that he missed? You want to see something cool? Everyone... Do you see in your histogram guidebook that's attached to your um, webinar stuff? See, Wells was close, but he was off the mark. And Gann was close, and he was off the mark. So, Matt, in time, there are these patterns where sometimes the selling signal goes up, and sometimes the buying signal goes down. Does that make sense? So right here, for example, 
then we can look at the software and I'll show you some examples of this. Once we believe that time is a language that market participants are speaking, it's a dialect. There are words that translate differently. And so after about five years of using this, you get to a cell signal and it goes in the complete opposite direction, straight up. Or you can get to a buy signal and it goes in the complete opposite direction down. I have a new guidebook that um, I haven't set up yet. I'll get you guys a link before we leave here today. And Matt, I've found new patterns. There's one called a pattern eight, which is a variant of a pattern four. And it's on the NQ chart. Watch it. Ready? Stay with me. Don't have an epileptic seizure. So Matt, when you arrive at a selling pressure signal, and there are three lower lows or three lower closes in a row. The market, burn this in your memory, ready? It tends to go up first and then drop down. This is called a pattern eight. Are you watching? So now look, you see the 352 signal right here? <laughs> lower low, lower low lower low pattern ocho we put a little arrow underneath it now watch up up and then what is it supposed to do crash what do we do with the pattern eight trend continuation break out below the low of the fourth candle we put a sell signal right here and so time and timing signals <clears throat> begin to show us more and more and more about the system. We can start out with blue and white up and down patterns one and two, and then add more complexity to it as we become more fluent in the language, in the dialect of time. So now, I want you to see something to verify how universal these things are, in fact. If you go back and you look at the market delta, which was, for those of you who don't know, a very popular, very expensive um, course. How much was that book, Matt? Was it 10 grand, 25 grand? It was a lot. I mean, he was proud. <laughs> he was proud of that book. But here's his chart. Now check it out. <clears throat> Back in 97, for those of you who don't know, the book would tell us what signals were coming up. So, <clears throat> Matt, these were his cell signals, and these were his buy signals, right? And so, you were supposed to wait for that day, and then the thing you were expecting was supposed to happen. But now, Matt, check it out. You see where it says number 20 right here? What Wells would do, because he didn't understand what I just showed you, he didn't immerse himself long enough to speak the language fluently. He would look for a pivot that eventually occurred and he'd go, Matt, look, there's the pivot we were waiting on. <laughs> and now in our universe, because we're fluent with it, and we sit there and we watch it over and over again. Check it out. Time, he was right, but he didn't know he was right. 
And that's what kills me. This is why I wish I had lunch with the knuckleheads. If we follow the 20th, now look, I'm going to use the pen here so I can do it. If you look when that move was coming, Matt, I'm trying to draw a straight line. It's this candle right here. And in the universe of warp and back to the future trading and the language of that histogram guidebook, Matt, it's a pattern five. There's a prior swing right here and it breaks the high. It's the highest high, day number 20. And do you notice how it does exactly what a pattern five does? We it falls. And he, I think he pushed out. I really think, Matt, he pushed out and he's like, yeah, but it happened over here eventually. No. It's wrong. In fact, that's a that's a 33% split pattern four. If you're a force or a warp customer who knows what I just said, you can screen grab that and see for yourself. Now check this out. He comes over here and he missed it in the opposite direction. Where is it? Watch it again. He says, this is number four. But then Matt, he pushes out and says, it came early. It came early, but now watch. There's a prior swing high. And now I'm gonna do my best to draw the, the line straight down. And Matt, do you see how it's this little bar right here? And then the very next candle is a little bit lower. It's hard to see. It's this example. <laughs> it's a pattern four on his number four. And if he knew enough to tell people, if he studied this long enough, if he immersed himself in the dialect, he would have realized the four wasn't here. It was here and the market reverses and comes up. So a lot of these guys were really close, but they got swept away in the marketing of it, and they didn't really embrace the, the theory of it. See, I'm all in on this stuff. I think I would make Gan angry and say, why are you drawing all these crazy squares and cycles and boxes? You, you made it too hard. You're doing it wrong. And it's cocky of me to say that. I get it. But I believe that's true. So anyway, fun fact. Um, I'm on my daily time frame now. And just think, I only had about a half inch of this energy drink. 15 years. This is my stock chart for Apple right now. And the move that we were waiting for started on February 28th and is expected to go into um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I expect to be the beginning of a reversal in Apple. <clears throat> and so I have all of these signals down here, B uh, bonds on a 60-minute chart. I have a Bitcoin chart, a Tesla chart. Tesla's getting ready to move up. And Matt, now we start moving into some weird things. For example, the signal on this chart <coughs> is predictive. <coughs> but it's based on something insane. If you read Gann's works and interviews, with him. Again, if you don't know, was an early practitioner, one of the first people through the wall, over the wall, that looked at time. He said natural laws govern market movements. Well, these signals are literally the days that the moon is farthest from the earth and closest to the earth. Matt, it travels in, in an elliptic pattern, an egg-shaped pattern, with two focal lengths. One is closer, 
<coughs> and one's farther away. And when we put those signals on Tesla stock, it does stuff. And in the corner of the screen, you can see there are the dates and the times when the next signals are coming. But it's based on the lunar elliptical orbit. Well, this is based on the phases of the moon. <laughs> this signal is based on a new moon. This signal is based on a full moon. And in our live advanced training room, we've been using these signals to predict when the price of gold would go up or go down. Now I've got a lot drawn on here. Let me um, let me save this workspace before I start deconstructing it. And so, Matt, we can use something silly like an energy cycle to track when we expect things to happen. And here's one thing I figured out. On the day that the market is making an all-time high, where are the richest people in the world putting their money? On the day the market is making an all-time high, at a predicted sell day, which is the stop run of a double top, where has everyone been putting their money? That move, look at it on a daily chart. In comparison, this is Warren Buffett's stock right here. How much money does Berkshire Hathaway put in Apple? A lot. It's his favorite stock. And all the while, <laughs> where did the money go? It was here and then it wasn't. And now it's here. On a day when what? Again, I don't know if this is going to play out. I'm right a lot, though. Just look at all these things and how they're connected. If you'll hang out with me a few minutes today, I think we're going to learn a couple of things together. On the day that this is happening, that double top stop run on a selling day, everyone is already on the lifeboat. Hmm. But this is based on the moon. There's so many things that are available to us. If we fall back into the idea that time and energy are the driving forces behind markets. Now, why would we even pay attention to this? Where would we get a ridiculous idea to look at the moon phases on gold charts? Who would be out of their mind to even suggest that there's some form of a mechanism that connects mass psychology to the invisible environment in the same way that your body produces vitamin D in sunshine and has a profound health effect. Who else could justifiably, oh wait, this guy did. Well, this is the guy who made the biggest bank in the world, the known universe, the Darth Vader of finance. And when we come back and test his theory, <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? So now here's what we know. 
The next phase four is in four days from now. So inside of this window, right, let's draw some vertical lines. I'm sorry for being overly dramatic. One, two, three, four, right? We're coming into the four day window from now. We should start to, at the very least, see gold start to kind of slow down in this four day window right here. Does that make sense? Because we have another one of these coming. And what happens at these? The market slows down and goes sideways or drops. So, Matt, that's what I have for gold on a daily time frame. If we apply gold's signals to uh, the warp chart, right? If we come at it from another angle, we drill at it with another uh, drill bit, we can put warp on a daily gold chart and matt you see how the data mining kind of gets us in the same ballpark friday march 8th so things are starting to slow down where are they slowing down When are they going to sell? When everybody and their brother sees that it's made an all-time high. That's a stop run. When they come up and break this high, look, Matt, is it feasible now that we come up and we trigger this high in gold on the day that the program has been warning us? <laughs> Do you see why I love this? Do you see why I love this? <coughs> now, there's another piece of information on this chart that we can use predictably. And take a look at it. The banks aren't that smart. <coughs> it's like I have Tourette's with my cough today. I'm sorry. I want to direct your attention back to March 1st over here last year can everybody see march last year and i want you to theorize this with me ready matt what does it do it goes up it comes down and then it shoots up into a blue signal that ends up being the high you see it Let's come here and make an example of it. Remember when I used to do this stuff all the time, Earl? You used to love when I did this stuff. I'm doing this for you today. Check this out. And we'll do that. Now look, it's a year later. That's our window. It comes down, dips down, and then shoots up. Well, let's take a look. How far does it shoot up when it shoots up? Well, from this low, ready, Tom, Bala? Before, before it slows down, it makes it this high back in 2023. Everybody see that triangle right there? That's as high as it went from the low last time. The maximum favorable excursion, as high as it gets, is here. Before the blue dot. Bala, does it make sense what I just did? I'm looking to see. I'm assuming time is the underlying firmament the operate the iOS of how markets are running. The banks won't call me and tell me what times they're going to do this stuff. 
So I have to forge my own invitation to the party. Warp forges that invitation to the party. And now we can see if we assume the wizard is behind the curtain, if we assume these timing signals that Wells got so close to and Gan got so close to exist, then we can start to pull information from the chart. So now check this out. We come over here, Bala, and I'm going to put this triangle right there. Oh, let's be as precise as we know how to be. <laughs> let's take this triangle and we'll put it right next to that one. Over here. And both of these things potentially, all of these things occur. What's the highest it goes before the blue dot? Let's be really precise about our language, right? Because they've done this before. <coughs> Excuse me. That's as high as they went last time. So, Bawa, between now and tomorrow, that's about as high as we can expect. Looks kind of weird, right? And then here, it goes a little bit higher <coughs> by the white dot. It goes a little bit higher by the white dot, which I'll put there. That looks like a plan to me, doesn't it? It kind of feels like a plan. And Earl, what I used to do, people loved when I did this. I was the hit of the party. I used to put letters, Thomas, to mark the moves. And all sorts of wonderful things occur if you believe this is real. If you believe time is real, and I hope I've done a good job of proving to you today on the intraday stuff that this is real. If we call this one A and this one A, and then we call the white dot B, and then we call the white dot B, You see how it's just Taylor Swift singing Third Eye Blind again? Do, 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 do. It's the same stuff. And Thomas, they're almost there. So what do you think of that? You can prepare. It's a real thing. It's happening. Any questions about how we can do this stuff with the Warp software? We can do it with any market. We can do it with any time. We could do it with soybeans, sure. We could do it with bonds. But the premise is the same. Once we know the dates, we have a map. Now, these dates are not based on moon phases, but boy, they sure line up a little bit, don't they? They sure line up. <laughs> and right around the time that blue dot is coming, there's a new moon. Blue dot Friday, new moon Monday. Huh. It's weird how all those things line up together, though. It's weird how all that stuff lines up together. And so NVIDIA becomes this sort of anomaly, right? You start to look at it and say, well, which one of these cycles does it follow? Which cycle does NVIDIA follow? And so we'll come in here and we'll put uh, a bigger 
stop on it so we can um, track it a little better. So there's NVIDIA with the full moon, new moon on top of it. And a part of you starts to go, that's insane. <laughs> a part of you starts to say, that's crazy. If it was useful, people would be talking about it. Which people? The ones at the websites and the news organizations that are owned by the corporations? You want those people to tell you about this? No, they're not going to tell you something. And so, Thomas, we can do the same thing now. Every time there's a full moon in NVIDIA, we can keep track. How far did the banks push? This is called an exertion analysis, right? And then when we get to that signal, we can literally just keep track of how far it's gone and use that to gauge a target. So you could have gone long at 780, your target one is 820, your target two is 840, target three is 865, Max target 904. Yeah. It's crazy. And there are people here that are trying to talk themselves out of it. It's not real. If I tell someone I saw this chart, they won't let me have muffins on Sunday at church. I am not an astrologist. It's not astrology, it's astronomy, it's electromagnetic field theory. Humans, as a population, have a sense of magnetic field density. And the moon cycles are just deltas of that field strength. So yeah, are we on our way to a thousand? I don't know. Here's what I know. There's a line that's going this way. And I have three days and 22 hours to get there which is one, two, three. Where does the third day intersect the line? That's what you can do when you have time. That's what you can do when you're using time signals. Any questions about that? Whether it's gold on a five minute chart, or the NASDAQ on a one minute chart, right? Or the ES on a five minute chart. These are the kinds of things that I want you to know are possible. This is the kind of training that I want you to know is available. If you guys want a market analyzed, hook me up as a mentorship hour. Go in there, pick up an hour of my time. I'll do all these things with you for whatever market you wanna watch. There are customers here trading those things in the live room. The answers are there. You just have to believe. And if you believe and you dig a little deeper, you're going to see it. Here's Bitcoin today <laughs> on a five minute chart. And I want to leave you with this. This is the forbidden market. It does, Jack. I should have included the weekend days. It's looking at calendar days and not trading days. That was a great question, Jack. Thank you. I forgot to mention that. This is the forbidden market. No way to know what Bitcoin is going to do. It was part of the forecasts that we published on these pages. Bitcoin was one of those, and I want you to see. And we can look at Bitcoin on a daily or a 60 or a five minute. You could have traded Bitcoin long today at 840 on the futures market. 
on Bitcoin futures. You could have traded Bitcoin long today at 1015. And then if you wanted to get back in, Matt, you could have traded Bitcoin long today until 1255. Little window here from 7 to 720. There's a pattern five here. I can't trade it. I wait until two o'clock and then it falls. And then I could have traded Bitcoin long today from 305 to 350. That plan was in place since Tuesday. And for some of you, that is gospel. It's good news in the Greek. Gospel means good news in Greek. For some of you seeing this, you can't accept it. There's something about it that's overwhelmingly <coughs> unbelievable to you. And to others of you, it's good news. Again, studying the same things, looking at the same stuff. If you all look at the same stuff, you start to see the same thing. And what's great about this is I'm not the first guy who told people about this. Gan tried to tell people. Nobody listened to him. I know that nobody listened to him. We have documented proof of that. Very few people did. But he was adamant. He said it's the most important thing in determining market movements. If you study the past records, you will see for yourself that history does repeat. At one point, someone's gonna sing a song that sounded like a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> May I live long enough to hear it and complain about it on a webinar 15 years from now. But in that sense, I believe this too. I didn't invent anything with this program. I'm simply exposing all of you, your consciousness, to what's always been happening. I didn't invent full moons <laughs> and new moons. People have seen this and taken advantage of it for years. But Matt, they're missing these little pieces of it, like the pattern four. They're missing these little pieces of it, like a pattern five. And they say, well, it was a full moon and the market went straight down. This is horse pucky. You didn't know the language. Here's a book with the language. Now go back. I dare all of you, take that book, put those signals on a daily chart and see what happens. Then you start to go, hey, that full moon was a cycle high in oil and it fell $30 back here on this year, it fell $10, it fell $8. That new moon was a pattern four and it went up $10, $15, Maybe the people who poo-pooed this just felt good poo-pooing it. Too many times I use the word poo-poo. And so it's really cool because when you kind of parse through the notes people have left behind for us, it's consistent with what we saw today. If you study the time cycles, you're going to see times in the future that end up being a high or a low, just like Bitcoin. Look, by a study of the time periods and time cycles, you will learn why tops and bottoms are found what? At certain times. There wasn't crypto. <laughs> in 1909, but it's a market and people are participating in it. And we did a study. We found the echoes. They projected forward. Did tops and bottoms appear at certain times? It's always been there. It's not going away. And I take comfort in that because as a vendor, as a guy who's out there with my Mr. Potato Head on the Instagram videos, I want you to know 
this is something that's been working for 150 years. It doesn't go away next week like all the garbage that um, that people sell us. Any questions? I kind of went on. Uh, I kind of went on a um, on a rant there. Uh, because I care. I want you to be successful and I want you to see the things I see pretty clearly now. And some of you are sort of seeing them more clearly than you have. And some of you are just starting to make out the shapes in the ether. Trading is not about looking at lagging indicators. Lagging indicators can be manipulated. Volume can be manipulated. Price action can be manipulated. Speeds of markets can be manipulated. Spoofing. Orders appearing that were never there. JP paid a billion dollars for spoofing in gold futures, precious metals. So how effective is market delta if the orders never were there? <laughs> how effective is volume if the orders never appeared? They don't play by the rules but they have to follow the times. Time can't be ignored. And so if you're going to trade, I would argue that trading is about knowing what will happen in the future. And time is the only medium available to us to effectively do that. It's pretty cool stuff. Ah, uh, I want to thank you for your time here today. I will walk you through how to get this if you want. I promise I won't belabor the point. You can go back and watch the very end of any one of our YouTube videos to make sure I've told you all this correctly. The program is Tachyon Warp. If you click on that page on our website, there's a buy now button at the bottom. This is a lifetime license for Ninja Trader. You get two indicator lifetime licenses. Here's the coolest part. Oh, the updated Hitchhiker's Guide, too. Yep, stand by. Thanks, Matt. I now run the live room. It is called the Advanced Trading Room. I run it. It is me. I show force charts. I show warp charts. It is awesome. I love it. I love the people who are there. Please keep coming. It's inspirational to me. If you would like to be a part of that, you can sign up in your customer resource center area or when you uh, buy the software at the very start, we meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And you can add that to your chart, to your cart here, 25% off if you want as a gift from us to get started. I look at the ES, the NQ, CL um, primarily, and we look at all of those daily charts that I just described with you. If you're an existing customer and you're not in there, come on, what are you doing? It's $200 a month, for Christ's sake. <laughs> if you don't want it, don't get it. Pass through, there's a purchase agreement here. Um, we go out of our way. <laughs> <laughs> with some of the best people I can find to make sure your installation process goes smoothly, that you have the best training available, the best resources available, the best documentation available. Um, this is a no return, no, no refund purchase. I'm in 100%. Our whole staff, man, you're part of the family when you sign up. Please, please. Don't call Visa 45 days later because uh, someone hit your kid's car and he needs a new mirror and you need the money back and tell them that we didn't deliver the product or it was fraudulent. Please don't do that. It happens. Happened this week. I have a hundred emails from a customer saying they're making money, they're happy. Here's my P&L. 
And then Visa called and says, what is this from Mr. So-and-so who says you never delivered the product? <laughs> Please just read through that. Um, and you're going to be asked to click here and agree to those terms and conditions. We promise that it'll be bug free. We promise to support you. We're here. There's all sorts of things. For example, we have a Skype group that's filled with people. 220 people in this Skype room right now sharing their results with each other, sharing their entries with each other. Um, a community of users that are willing to help you and stand by you and share their uh, settings and successes and failures with each other. That's a new addition. Um, but you also get a promo code W-A-R-P-O-F-F -F for listening to all this shenanigan talk. W-A-R-P-O-F-F, -F, lowercase W, A is in Apple, R is in radio, P is in Papa, Oscar, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, no spaces, takes $500 off the lifetime license. Free updates on the indicator uh, for Warp for Life. Access to the video training archive where you'll learn how to use the software at your own pace. Mentoring is available one-on-one -on -one in the future if you need it. You can always join the live advanced training room to see signals being traded live. Access to the Skype community where you can meet other traders and uh, form relationships with existing users. The people who have come before you and left reviews and uh, shared their uh, positive results. Anyone who was ever uh, up for leaving a review on Trustpilot, we can't control who says what, and we're not allowed to post false reviews. Um, verified customers who actually own the software show up as dark green. Um, those are the people you're going to be interacting with in the Skype group. So that's what's available to you if you want it. And uh, we've been around for 15 years. I think we're going to be around for 15 more. In the event, both me and my business partner are killed in a horrific train crash. We do have a Buddy Holly, uh, a Buddy Holly uh, plan where the indicators will be released open source to the community, so you guys can uh, um, continue to use them if you're relying on them for your income, as many of you are. I want to make sure you always have access to it. So if the East Coast is destroyed in a fiery, uh, <laughs> a fireball from Russian ballistic missiles, the, uh, the programmers have instructions to release the code and turn you guys loose. We've thought of all of it. Oh, if you want to join the Skype group, Joseph, let me get you a, um, an invite to that standby. I actually have a link that I can get you. There it is. <coughs> Ron's doing well. I'd like more info on the NASDAQ, on the desk, desk you. Dave, what are you specifically looking for information wise? Yeah, Ken, hold on. Here's the link. Anyone else who's a customer need the Skype room link? Happy to provide it. Answer all my money problems. Dave, I'll, I'll give you... um. I'll give you my number if you want to call me. I'm happy to connect with you, man. Uh, it's this. I might be coughing a lot while you're talking, but that's my number. Uh, what is uranium stock doing, UEC? The training is in Lexington, North Carolina. It's about 40 minutes from my house, 20 minutes from Ron's house. It's... um. Holiday Inn Express, Chil Childress Vineyards. 
And so what's nice about it is that um, I'm going to be there. Of course, that's what's nice about it. But next door to the um, to the hotel is the Childress Vineyards. And so at the very on on the back of it is one of the largest vineyards in the state. And we go across uh, the parking lot and drive down to the vineyards and we have lunch uh, and dinner there. Which will be provided to people who attend. So if you um, are up for that, it's a really beautiful area um, right across from the hotel. So I will be there uh, all. I'll be there Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I have a room there. Ron will be there. Rachel will be there. Dave will be there. Charlie will be there. Dorian will be there. Tim Flynn will be there. We try to get everyone there to meet up. Dates are the 15th, 16th, and 17th. Mark, hang on. I got the link for you. Make sure. Um, I got that. And then, Joseph, I actually have a link to the page, I think. Yep, here it is. And it's got more information on there. <coughs> Carrie, I've got the Skype room link. Um, I'll send it to you right here. Sorry, I gave you the wrong link. <coughs> <coughs> Forgive me again for the cough. You know that I do get this every once in a while. Joseph, here's the link to that event. And the new book was posted. I'll put it um, in there as well. No, thank you. Appreciate you guys. Um, the Dropbox link for V4 is in there. And um, you know what? I'll put it in the Skype group, too. That's what's nice about the um, the Skype group. I can um, drop it in there, and you guys can have access to it. There you go. So it's over there, too, now. Uh, about a month ago. And Carrie, I've got some more work to do on it, obviously, but it's better than the first one. It's a work in progress. Hey, I love you guys. I really, truly have uh, gratitude. Um, it's been a hard couple of years. <laughs> I feel like we've been through a lot. And I suspect I'm going to make a video on it. I suspect something really big is coming. I think you feel it too. Um, the phrase, something wicked this way comes, keeps rolling across the uh, Times Square uh, jumbotron of my mind. I think we're going to need each other a lot in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And I think there's going to be some once in a lifetime opportunities. But um, fear not. I think in gratitude from that position in a, in a manifestation of family and friends, how about that? And that's how I look at everybody here today as friends, as family. For some of you, I've known you longer <laughs> than my kids. Um, I have appreciation for you. And so you're doing good. Everything considered, we're here, we're alive. <laughs> we made it through the last nonsense. 
and I think we're going to make it through the next nonsense. But be uh, be wise as serpents and gentle as lambs, somebody told me once. And I think this program, this training, it's serpent training. It's uh, wolf training. And if you want to be a wolf uh, and run with us here, uh, I'm glad to have you in our pack. May the wind be at your backs. May the sun shine upon your handsome, glorious, beautiful faces. May the valley rise up to meet you. May the mountains lay low before you. I say it every week, but I mean it. We are for you. We are on your side. There are no secrets here. Whatever we know, please ask. Whatever dreams and hopes and goals you have for yourself, I believe in you. I know that you can do it. I've seen other people do it. And um, yeah, Joseph, it's time. <laughs> Joseph, it's time. <laughs> if you can, man, you got you got to reach in that pocket, <laughs> reach in that pocket and pry that George Costanza wallet open, man. <laughs> I'm for all of you. I know you can do it. There's at least one person in the world who believes it, and I think you can do it. And I'm so excited to watch you grow and fulfill all those plans you have for yourself. Guys, ladies, have a great night. If you need me, email me. I'll be around. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week. Yes, Joseph, there is. Um, I'll email you, a matter of fact, uh, something about that right now and make sure you got something to look at, okay? Matter of fact, I'll start an email before we hang up so I know that I'm doing it and we'll take care of you. Uh, compose. Got your email right there. All right, guys, have a great night. We'll see you soon. Good luck.